Hello, I'm Robert Jones. Today we're going to continue with our course on uh, the top 25 Protestant reformers of the 16th century. We have reached number three, which is Ulrich Zwingli. Born January 1st, 1484 in Wildhaus, Switzerland. 1498, he enrolls in the University of Vienna. It's possible he may have been expelled from that institute. 1500 uh, to 1502, he does indeed attend the University of Vienna. 1506, he receives a Master of Arts at the University of Basel. He ordains as a priest in Constance on the German-Swiss border on September 29, 1506. From 1506 to 1518, he operates as a priest in Glarus, Switzerland. 1513, uh, he's a chaplain on the Roman Catholic side in the Battle of Novara in Italy. Between August uh, 1514 and May 1516, he has several meetings with Erasmus in uh, Basel. December 11, 1518, appointed preacher to Grossmünster Cathedral in Zurich, and through his influence, he leads Zurich to withdraw from the alliance with Catholic France, which would have been a big, uh, big step. January 1, 1519, he preaches his first sermon at the Grossmünster on the Gospel of Matthew. 1519, his, uh, in his sermons, he questions veneration of the saints, the idea that unbaptized children go to hell, the sale of indulgences, and the idea that tithing is a divine institution. August 1519, bubonic plague hits Zurich, and Zwingli stays at his post, ministering to his flock. September 1519, Zwingli catches the plague and almost dies. April 29, 1521, uh, Zwingli is elected as a full canon and becomes a citizen of Zurich. April 1522, in the affair of the sausages, Zwingli publicly eats sausage during Lent and points out that there was no discussion of Lent or food restrictions in the New Testament. Some people view this as the beginning of the Reformed Church in Zurich. July 2, 1522, he campaigns with a local bishop to remove the requirement for priestly celibacy. January 29, 1523, he writes the first Zurich, uh, or uh, is involved in the first Zurich disputation, where he presents his concluding statements, also known as the 67 Articles. October 26, 1523, the second Zurich disputation covers images, the nature of the Eucharist, as well as ecclesiastical versus city council power or governmental power. Uh, Conrad Grebel, uh, an early uh, Anabaptist, calls for the elimination of infant baptism. November 1523, uh, Zwingli writes his short Christian introduction on the duties of pastors. April 2, 1524, a priest Ulrich Zwingli secretly marries Anna Reinhard. April 8, 1524, the cantons of Luzern, Schweiz, Unterwalden, Uri, and Zug create an alliance against the Swiss Reformation. August 15, 1524, the city council affirms the necessity of infant baptism and therefore says to the budding Anabaptist movement, 1525, first parts of Zwingli's New Testament are printed. January 17, 1525, a public debate between Zwingli and the nascent Anabaptists. Uh, the result is the latter are required to leave the city. January 21, 1525, Conrad Grebel, Felix Mons, and George Blayrock illegally rebaptize each other at the house of Felix Mons. February 2, 1525, Mans and Blayrock are arrested. April 13, 1525, Zwingli creates a new communion liturgy replacing the mass. It's called the Act or the Custom of the Supper. June 19, 1525, he opens a Latin school at the Grossmünster to re-educate the clergy. November 6 to 8, 1525, final debate on infant baptism before the Zurich Council. March 7, 1526, rebaptizing is made punishable by death. May 19, 1526, the Diet and Baden votes to ban all of Zwingli's writings. Uh, Bern, Basel, Schaffhausen, and Zurich all voted in favor of Zwingli. Zwingli did not attend this diet. January 5, 1527, Felix Mons is executed by drowning in the Lamotte River. January 5 and 6, 1528, Zwingli forms the Christian Civic Union 
Initially, it would include Bern, Constance, and Zurich. Eventually, Basel, Biel, Mollhausen, Schaffhausen, and San Galan will uh, join. January 6, 1528, the Council of Bern begins and includes reformers Wingli, Bousset, and Wolfgang Capito with Zingli in the lead. February 7, 1528, the City Council of Bern officially declares in favor of the Reformation. April 22nd, 1529, the five Catholic states form an alliance with Frederick, uh, I'm sorry, with Ferdinand of Austria, and it's called the Christian Alliance. June 8th, 1529, Zurich raises 30,000 men against the five states, who are quickly abandoned by Ferdinand of Austria. It's sometimes referred to as the First Battle of Capel. The conflict was averted at the last moment by an intermediary. And by the way, the five states only had 9,000 men against the 30,000 of the Protestants. June 24th, 1529, uh, Land Peace of Capel officially ends the conflict. October 1st to 4th, 1529, Zwingli and Luther meet at the Marburg Colloquy at Marburg Castle, Marburg, Hesse, Germany. They agree on all points except for one. And, <clears throat> except for one, excuse me. And guess which one it is? Uh, the real presence uh, during the communion. 14 of 15 points were agreed on. 1530s, Wingley publishes his account of faith to coincide with the Augsburg Confession. November 1530, Zurich, Basel, and Strasbourg sign a defense treaty with Philip of Hesse in Germany. Philip will later pull out because of Zwingli's opposition to the Tetrapolitan Confession of Martin Bousset and Wolfgang Capito. May 1531, Zwingli's alliance in Switzerland of reformed cities tries an unsuccessful food blockade on the Catholic cities. Zwingli had argued for war, not a blockade. July 26, 1531, Zwingli resigns as minister of the Grossmünster, but the city council refuses to accept it. October 9, 1531, the five Catholic states declare war on Zurich. On October 11, 1531, Ulrich Zwingli dies fighting in the Catholic Protestant Second War of Capel. December 1531, the Zurich City Council selects Heinrich Bullinger, who we've already discussed, as Zwingli's successor. Zwingli is a contemporary, not a follower of Luther, and he laid the foundation for the Reformed Church, which would in time include uh, the Presbyterian Church, the Huguenots, the Pilgrims, uh, 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 the Puritans, etc., etc. As Luther, he believed that mankind is unregenerate, and is saved only through the intercession of Christ. Also, as Luther, he believed in the supreme authority of the Bible. Zwingli believed in predestination, and he took it to some interesting conclusions. He felt that it would be impossible for God to be omnipotent and omnipresent if he did not control and dispose all events. As Zwingli believed that we are predestined to salvation or damnation before birth, also known as double election, this meant that there may be members of the elect among the heathen, Luther is utterly horrified by such an idea. He also believed that infants that died before being baptized might be saved. Why? Well, they might have been predestined to salvation. In terms of baptism, Zwingli believed that baptism by water can take place without baptism of the Holy Spirit, and that baptism by the Holy Spirit can take place without baptism of water. In the latter case, the believer is still saved. So therefore, it's not absolutely positively necessary that one receives a water baptism to be saved. So Wingle believed in infant baptism, a point that he violently disagreed with his students, the Anabaptists. To Zwingli, an important element of infant baptism is a profession of faith by the parents and a pledge to bring the child up as a Christian. On the Eucharist, Luther believed that Christ's body and blood were present during the sacrament. This is known as the real presence. Zwingli felt that the bread and wine signify the body and blood of Christ, but don't actually turn into that. He further believed that the sacrament was a commemoration, not a repetition, as in the Catholic faith, faith of the atoning sacrifice of Christ. The Zwingli communion was a visible sign of an invisible grace. On predestination, I'm sorry, on the, the Eucharist, Zwingli had the following. To say, I believe that in the Holy Eucharist, i.e. the Supper of Thanksgiving, the true body of Christ is present by the contemplation of faith. This means that they who thank the Lord for the benefits bestowed on us in his Son acknowledge that he assumed true flesh, 
In it truly suffered, truly washed away our sins by his blood, and thus everything done by Christ becomes, as it were, present to them by the contemplation of faith. But that the body of Christ in essence and really, i.e., the natural body itself, is either present in the supper or masticated with our mouth and teeth, as the Papists or some, i.e., the Lutherans, who look back to the flesh pots of Egypt assert, we not only deny, but constantly maintain to be an error contrary to the word of God. In view of these passages, we are compelled to confess that the words, this is my body, should not be understood naturally, but figuratively, just as the words, this is Jehovah's Passover. During the first uh, Zurich disputation, disputation, Zwingli represented the views of the Roman Church in uh, Switzerland. Uh, he was also involved in the second Zurich disputation, uh, the Council of Bern in uh, 1528, and the Marburg Colloquy. In 1529, and I think we can say that during all of these, uh, Zwingli never changed his uh, his viewpoints one inch. The first Zurich disputation includes some of the following: all who say that the gospel is invalid with the confirmation of the church err and cast reproach upon God. Christ is the only way to salvation for all who ever were, who are, and who shall be. Whoever seeks or shows another uh, errors. Yea, is the murderer of souls and a robber. Christ is the head of all believers. All who live in, his, uh, in this head are his members and children of God. And this is the true Catholic or universal church, the communion of saints. Who believes the gospel shall be saved. Who believeth not shall be damned. For in the gospel the whole truth is clearly contained. From the gospel we learn that the doctrines and traditions of men are of no use to salvation. The Mass is no sacrifice, but a commemoration of the sacrifice of the cross and a seal of redemption through Christ. Christ is the only mediator between God and us. Christ is righteous. From this it follows that our works are good so far as they are Christ, but not good as far as they are our own. The power of the Pope and the bishops has no foundation in the Holy Scriptures and in the doctrine of Christ. God alone forgives sins through Jesus Christ our Lord alone. And the Holy Scripture knows nothing of a purgatory after this life. During the Second Battle of Capel, he dies on the battlefield fighting against the Catholics. You can see that wonderful uh, engraving there showing the death of Zwingli uh, being killed by the Catholic forces. Here's a description. On the battlefield not far from the line of attack, Mr. Ulrich Zwingli lay under the dead and wounded. While men were looting, he was still alive, lying on his back with his hands together as if he were praying, and his eyes looking upwards to heaven. So some approached who did not know him and asked him, since he was so weak and close to death, for he had fallen in combat and was stricken with a mortal wound, whether a priest should be fetched to hear his confession. At this the Catholics grew impatient, cursed him, and said that he was one of the obstinate, cantankerous heretics and should get what he deserved. Then Captain Fuchinger of the Unterwalden appeared in an exasperation drew his sword and gave Zwingli a thrust from which he at once died. So the renowned Mr. Ulrich Zwingli, true minister and servant of the churches of Zurich, was found wounded on the battlefield along with his flock, with whom he remained until his death. There, because of his confession of the true faith in Christ our only Savior, the mediator and advocate of all believers, he was killed by a captain who was a pensioner, one of those against whom he had always preached so eloquently. And this is from uh, Heinrich Bullinger. His impact and legacy, he initiated the practice of sermon-centric churches as opposed to mass-centric uh, services. He defined the views of the Reformed Church regarding the Eucharist and the abolished mass. He created one of the primary movements that came out of the Protestant Reformation, uh, the Reformed Faith. As founder of the Reformed Faith, Zwingli is the spiritual founder of Presbyterians, Congregationalists, Puritans, the Reformed Church in Europe, Anabaptists, and Huguenots. And that uh, concludes our discussion of Ulrich Zwingli. Thank you.